Hello everybody, um, slightly unusual location this week. I'm on holiday in Cornwall, uh, as you can see. Very beautiful, down by Lou. We're camping with the boys. They're over there somewhere at the moment, so we may be interrupted. Um, but yes, uh, I had a, a question this week about infection, and this is on the Ask a Banbury Vet uh, Facebook site. And does my dog need antibiotics? The question. Um, we've always got to be very careful about our use of antibiotics, as you all know. And you know, medics and vets. Just move something out of the way here. Medics and vets are constantly being exhorted to uh, be very responsible with their use of antibiotics. So really, we should only be using antibiotics when when we really have to. So when should we be using antibiotics? Well. The first thing is that antibiotics won't work for any kind of viral infection. So if we think your pet has viral infection, then really we probably won't be prescribing antibiotics. The only reason we might prescribe antibiotics is what we call prophylactically. So perhaps your pet is very young, very old, has other problems, or perhaps it's a really severe viral infection, and we're worried about secondary bacterial uh, infection because uh, Bacteria uh, are what get killed by antibiotics. Oh, I can hear a small boy coming through at the moment. So it's only bacteria that get uh, affected by antibiotics. And they're either killed or they're held in check while the immune system kills off the, the infection. In fact, you know, for millions of years, animals have got better without the use of antibiotics. Our immune system is extremely competent uh, at killing off in bacterial infections. It tends to be, again, the young, the old, the otherwise sick that succumb to these bacterial problems. Um, so generally, we, we are the, an the antibiotics are helping whilst the immune system then goes around and actually finishes the job, so to speak. Um, so how do we know if there's a bacterial infection or not well bacteria generally cause some kind of inflammation and let's all think of a spot it's got a red circle around it and then a white head right in the middle that white head is actually dead white blood cells bits of tissue fluid that that kind of thing the red circle is part of one of the four cardinal signs of inflammation and the things to look out for are well Let's go back to the Latin, calor, dolor, rubror, and turgor. So calor, like calor gas, it's, it's heat. So infections or inf inf inflamed areas tend to be very, very hot. Um, dolor, uh, pain. Uh, inflamed areas tend to be painful. I can't, is dolorous a word? I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, turgor, turgid, turgid, um, swollen, that means. Uh, and then finally, uh, rubro redness. Uh, so those are our four cardinal signs of, of inflammation. And when we get a bacterial infection, we would be expecting to see either all four, three out of the four, two out of the four, and occasionally just one out of the four. So when should we be using the antibiotics when we suspect a bacterial infection? Well, you might see an awful lot of pus coming out of a wound, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they need antibiotics. Again, the pus is just the dead skin cells coming out. It's not primary, oh, sorry, dead white blood cells coming out. It's not actually primary bacteria pouring out, out, out of a wound. Um, so in that case, if uh, a wound is actually leaking pus, uh, but we can't see any inflammation beyond the wound, it may be that actually, because it's draining, Perhaps just cleaning the area out is enough. Um, most of the bacteria, pus forming bacteria tend to be anaerobic, that is they survive in the absence of oxygen. So just opening the wound up and letting the oxygen get to it is often enough. It, that, that's as good an antibiotic as anything else. Uh, however, um, we might well look at a, a site and we can see uh, like a cat scratch, maybe the scratch itself doesn't look too bad but there's a spreading area of redness and pain change in this in in the skin the way the skin feels you know there's a bit of inflammation there maybe it's painful that would be indicative of an active bacterial infection and that's what we would really be looking for with, with antibiotics um I'm guilty of it, Do other, other vets are guilty of it, doctors are guilty of it. Sometimes we see an active bacterial infection and we reach for the nearest antibiotic that we think is generally the best for the most likely type of infection that we see there. So that might be 
penicillins, it might be gentamicin, streptomycin, it could be enrofloxacin. We've got a whole gamut of, of, of things to reach for. So perhaps for a skin, we might reach for a, a, a cephalexin, um, whereas for a, an abscess which is spreading, perhaps we'd go for clindamycin. Um, but occasionally what we'll do, especially if it's not cleared up very quickly with the, with the first lot of antibiotics, we'll ask for something called a culture and sensitivity. And what we'll do in that case is actually take a little bit of the active, not pus, but the actively inflect, in, infected area and send it away to the lab and the lab will grow it and they will look at exactly the type of bug that's in there. And they'll also tell us what antibiotics are going to work for it as well. They, they, they put, I think, about 10 different antibiotics around this, the agar plate that they grow it on and we can see from the zone of inhibition which one's going to be the best one to work. Um, we also need to bear in mind that certain antibiotics are expressed um, in different parts of the, of the system much better than others. So for instance penicillin um, uh, presents in, in the urine really really nicely. Uh, the cephalexins tend to present in the skin really really nicely. So the, the antibiotics are actually getting to the site where we, where we need them to be. And finally, we just need to be careful about antibiotic resistance. So imagine we've got a population of a million bacteria. Um, we give a certain amount of an antibiotic, but we leave some of those, uh, those bacteria behind. Well, they're the bacteria that weren't killed by that antibiotic in the first place. So the next time their descendants grow and they, they, they populate the, the area, they are more likely to be resistant to that uh, original antibiotic. So I'm thinking about, especially ear infections here, continually pouring antibiotics antibiotics into ears often isn't the, isn't the most sensible thing to do and we should be looking at other things that we can do there you know culture and sensitivities cleaning the ears out letting letting the air letting the oxygen in that that sort of thing so you know looking out for antibiotic resistance is is, is really critical and you know we always say if you've been given a course of antibiotics for your pet make sure you do uh, you do complete it so that's, that, that's when we should be using antibiotics, looking for infection, that sort of thing. I uh, hope this helps and uh, I'd like to say goodbye from Sunny Lou and I better go and find my sons. Bye!